As I stand here, men, women and children are huddled in basements across Ukraine seeking protection. Soldiers and citizens alike have taken up arms to defend their land and families. The sorrow we feel for their suffering and admiration for their bravery is only matched by the gratitude we feel for the security in which we live. And what underpins that security is the strength of our economy. It gives us the ability to fund the armed forces we need to maintain our liberty, the resources we need to support our allies, the power to impose sanctions which cause severe economic costs, and the flexibility to support businesses and individuals through crises as they emerge. But, Mr Speaker, we should be in no doubt. Behind Putin's invasion is a dangerous calculation that democracies are divided, politically weak and economically insecure, incapable of making tough long-term decisions to strengthen our economies. Mr Speaker, this calculation is mistaken. What the authoritarian mind perceives as division, we know are the passionate disagreements at the heart of our living, breathing democracy. What they see as chaos, we know, is the freedom to be dynamic and innovative, and what they call the inherent weakness of open societies and free economies, we know, is the source of our strength. We will confront this challenge to our values, not just in the arms and resources we send to Ukraine but in strengthening our economy here at home. So when I talk about security, yes, I mean responding to the war in Ukraine, but I also mean the security of a faster growing economy, the security of more resilient public finances, and security for working families as we help with the cost of living. Mr Speaker, today's statement builds a stronger more secure economy for the United Kingdom. We have a moral responsibility to use our economic strength to support Ukraine and working with international partners to impose severe costs on Putin's regime. We are supplying military aid to help Ukraine defend its borders, providing around £400 million in economic and humanitarian aid as well as up to half a billion dollars in multilateral financial guarantees, and launching the new Homes for Ukraine scheme to make sure those forced to flee have a route to safety here in the UK. And we are imposing sanctions of unprecedented scale and scope. We've sanctioned over a thousand individuals, entities and subsidiaries, frozen the assets of major Russian banks, imposed punitive tariffs on tea products, restricted Russia's access to sterling clearing, to insurance, to the UK's capital markets, to SWIFT, and we've targeted the Russian central bank too. Be in no doubt, these sanctions coordinated with our allies are working. The Russian ruble plummeted to record lows. The Moscow Stock Exchange has been largely suspended for a month, and the Central Bank of Russia has been forced to more than double interest rates to 20%. We warned that an aggressive, unprovoked invasion would be met with severe economic costs, and it has. I'm proud to say, as the whole House will say, we stand with Ukraine. But, Mr Speaker, the actions we have taken to sanction Putin's regime are not cost-free for us at home. The invasion of Ukraine presents a risk to our recovery, as it does to countries around the world. We came into this crisis with our economy growing faster than expected, with the UK having the highest growth rate in the G7 last year. But the OBR has said specifically there is unusually high uncertainty around the outlook. It is too early to know the full impact of the Ukraine war on the UK economy. But their initial view, combined with high global inflation and continuing supply chain pressures, means the OBR now forecasts growth this year of 3.8%. 
The OBR then expect the economy to grow by 1.8% in 2023 and 2.1, 1.8 and 1.7% in the following three years. The House will take comfort that the lower growth outlook has not affected our strong jobs performance. Unemployment is now forecast to be lower in every year of the forecast. It is already at 3.9% back to the low levels we saw before the pandemic. But, Mr Speaker, the war's most significant impact domestically is on the cost of living. Covid and global factors meant goods and energy prices were already high. Statistics published this morning show that inflation in February was 6.2%, lower than the US and broadly in line with the euro area. Disruptions to global supply chains and energy markets, combined with the economic response to Putin's aggression, mean the OBR expect inflation to rise further, averaging 7.4% this year. As I said last month, the Government will support the British people as they deal with the rising costs of energy. People should know that we will stand by them as we have throughout the last two years. Yeah.